Hi, Bill Boggs here. You know, a couple years ago, a woman named Maribel Morgan wrote a book that was designed to help women stimulate their marriage. Well, we have a guest on our program today who has perhaps gone one step further than Maribel Morgan. She has written a book uh, called uh, How to Find a Man and Make Him Keep You. And she gives lots of advice on how to do that in the book with tips like this. To attract a man in public, for example, she says, lick your lips frequently. Rub your tongue, rub your tongue over your teeth often. Occasionally touch your breasts. <laughs> She says that if you want to attract his attention, you should stir your drink with one finger and then lick your finger. All right, on today's show, discussing this timely topic, among others, our guests will include Nancy Parker, a concerned single woman, Monique St. Pierre, the Playmate of the Year for Playboy magazine, Leslie Bennett of the New York Times, feminist, Tony Tucci, author of The Butterfly Secret, and our resident macho man, Hill de la Madrid. So stay with us. Thank you. Oh, we have a good audience today, and this audience, I, I, they're, they're ready, right? You ready to go with some questions? Good. Good. All right, this is our first guest. Really, she has not been properly introduced. Her name is Tracy Tanner. Let's have a nice welcome for Tracy. Now, Tracy, you're the author of this book, How to Find a Man and How to Make Him Keep You. What are you trying to accomplish with this book? Your fantasies. Living, living out your life, uh, enjoying your life, not just going home and wondering what's going to happen to you next. Taking uh, your life in your own hands and, and having fun with it. Well, I mean, th that could be a book about a lot of different things. Aren't you really essentially trying to tell a woman how to get a man into her life? Well, that's essential in most people's life. Just uh, sex is essential in everyone's life, not just... Uh, it's I know. Margaret Trudeau and I were talking about that <laughs> just last week. <laughs> yeah, she has her own theories. Uh, having fun with it, not being intimidated by it but using it to your, to your benefit. All right, now look, I'm w going to be reading directly from the book and ask you some questions based on this. On the first page here, this is sort of the prologue to the book, inspired by a woman who had many husbands. However, none of them were hers. That's you? No. Well, I have my own. You have your own husband? No, I do. So you're not, this is not a book trying to train women to take away other husbands? No, no, no. It's not, huh? No, not to train them to. That's something that I didn't invent. No one really invented it. It's just something that happens. You find yourself uh, enjoying uh, men, not totally to the nth degree, but your, your company, when you're working, half the people you work for, more than half the people you work with, are men. You're in the yeah, I know that. Men a lot. So far, I'm still trying to figure out what you're trying to do with this book. You say, you can have a man who cares for you and wants to make all your problems go away. You can have love and you can have charge accounts. Mm -hmm. yes. That's an important goal. No, that's not a goal. That's it's not a goal. That's, no, that's a chosen goal for some people. Some women have, would not want that. What kind, of, what kind of women do you want to buy this book? People want to improve their life. To women their women life. who want to improve enjoy their lives. Their life, right. uh, but I mean, basically, you're offering specific tips on things. For example, mm -hmm. Chapter 5 Where to Meet a Man with Money. Okay? Since Mr. Wonderful seldom plays Avon Lady and comes to your door, you have to put on your slinky slacks and your braless blouse and go to market, right? Right. So you say, here are some terrific places to meet those men. For example, go to a tennis court. Buzz over to the courts in the nicest part of town and walk around bouncing your fuzzy green ball and looking like a pro. You think that will work? <laughs> right. Okay, why? Because you, they don't come to you. You do have to go out and find people in areas that you enjoy. If you like to play tennis, you want someone with a mutual interest. If you would appreciate art, antiques, go to places like that. Wine, join a uh, wine tasting club. People that you know that you'll have something in common with. All right, now, here's the woman home, you know, reading this book. I, I want an explanation of this sentence. With your thermos of ice-cold lemonade, this is still at the tennis court, with your thermos of ice-cold lemonade, you'll attract men like Toady Fields to a meatloaf sandwich. You want to explain that? They're hot and tired. They want something to drink. and you, this Toady is Fields to a meatloaf sandwich? <laughs> Everything is written with a very uh, humorous point of view. Oh, <laughs> I see. I, 
I got it. I got it. Now, what about this? You're actually ex telling women to put an ad in the paper to attract men? Mm-hmm. Well, that's, you didn't explain what it said. Well, it says, wanted, executive with following qualifications, charming, intelligent, ambitious, attractive sense of humor, and most important, in need of a highly qualified woman. Salary, yes. Apply between 8 a.m. and 12 p.m. telephone number blank. Now, what do you think that's going to accomplish? Some, someone else with a sense of humor. You really think that somebody who really is anxious to meet someone else is going to follow up on that ad without thinking that sex is absolutely guaranteed? No, you, you'd be surprised at the replies you can get from very Did you funny ever do ads. that? Not that particular one, on an apartment, yes. Well, there's a big difference between looking for an apartment and trying to get oh, a that's... man who's going to keep you. You could write your tremendous own Tremendous difference. You could write... <laughs> no, you can write your own ad. You can get responses to just about anything. All right, let me keep plowing through the book here. There's more stuff here. Oh, yeah, this is very interesting. This is, uh, this is at a cocktail, at a place like a bar, some lines. You know, lines that you, these are lines that you recommend to meet men. All right? Could you tell me an interesting drink to try? I'm so tired of scotch and cranberry juice. <laughs> Hi, my name is Marilyn. I've just had my teeth cleaned, and I hate to waste it. definitely get an answer. <laughs> you really think that would work? All right, just moving right along here through this book. All right, personal secrets that are invaluable to a woman. Oh, yes. These are what to do with your eyes. Now, as I read these, I'd like you to try it, okay? And you folks in the audience, give me a reaction as to whether or not you think this would work. And by the way, uh, Tracy's saying, sit in front of a mirror and practice emotions and questions. Say each word and combine it with the expression explained. Please, parenthesis, a smile and wide-eyed blink. Want to try that? OK. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Beautiful smile and bright eyes. How could you? Slight frown. <laughs> You're the most wonderful man in the world. Look warmly and directly into his eyes. <laughs> now, with eyes half closed and teeth bared, you are saying, I'd love to bite you. <laughs> now, you know, my point is this. You really seriously think that a woman is going to buy this book, go home, sit in front of a mirror, and say, I'd love to bite you? And practice it like that? Yes. What, do you really, I mean, who are you writing this book for? For women. What kind of women? <laughs> Where have they been all their lives? Do women really need that? I mean, yes, you know. Yes, a lot of them do. Who needs something like that? They're very intimidated. They don't know what to say. Like. You are actually, here on page 97, you are saying, you are telling women to play dumb. You're saying, you may be well informed and knowledgeable in many areas, but it may pay off better if you don't expose your mind too much. Now, I think that's awful. No, sometimes you have to give them a chance to think of things because we know too many things. Be smart. Be smart, yes, but don't make him feel like a dim-witted cretin. Do you hear that? Be smart, but don't make him feel like a dim-witted cretin. Now, come on. It, That's are, really mean. Men are very easily intimidated by a woman who knows too much. They want to be able to do All something. Right, let me ask the men in the audience. We have a lot of men. How many men in the audience agree with that? I don't see many men in the audience. Men, raise your hands. There are plenty of men in the audience right here, see? They're all over the place. No, we have one woman waving at the camera. I'm sorry, it does not qualify you as a man. All right, I just want to see what I have one other thing here I wanted to ask you about. Oh, yes. Why do you feel it's necessary to include the ingredients for a fondue freakout? <laughs> there are all kinds of special surprise evenings you can plan for him. How about a fondue freakout? Equipment, fondue pot, fondue forks, plates with sections for sauces, small can of sterno. Aren't you sort of underestimating? No, it's, that's home entertainment. Few people will entertain A fondue it. freak out. <laughs> home entertainment. Okay, and also those things that I mentioned, these public turn-ons. Stir drink with finger and lick often. <laughs> now, come on. I mean, where did you get that? Do you ever do that? Do don't, you, I, don't you stir your drink and do that? 
to try to attract women? Stir <laughs> oh. let, me, let me see how you do that. No, you're stirring the ice. Stirring well, the pretend. Ice. No, you sit there. As an, it's a nervous habit to play with ice. Or, yeah, or but something. you're saying you to do this special. to attract men at a bar. I'm a guy at a it's bar. A subliminal, yes, it's a subliminal trick. A subliminal trick. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This entire afternoon is not in my hands. <laughs> and my finger is not in my mouth. <laughs> but we do have an interesting panel, including Leslie Bennett's a Playmate of the Year, concerned single woman, Nancy Parker, Tony Tushy, an audience of people who care. And we'll be back with them right after this. Don't move. Okay, now to further investigate some of the premises in Tracy Tanner's book, How to Find a Man and Make Him Keep You, we have, I think, an interesting panel here. First, let's have a nice welcome for our resident macho man, Hill de la Madrid, <laughs> right here. Are you I used to be called that Hispanic would never panic. No, no, you're, like the, man. No, you're the resident macho man. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right on. <laughs> also with us is uh, the Playmate of the Year, and it's 25th anniversary of Playmate magazine. This is Monique St. Pierre. Nice welcome to her, please. Also 25 years old. Uh, I know that, uh, that Hugh Hefner is watching right now. And Hef, let me just say this. Good pick. <laughs> really, uh, what's your reaction to what we were talking about? Going through all these strategies and games to get a man? Well, <clears throat> I don't believe, I'm very much a very real person and I do whatever I feel like doing at the time, so nothing is planned out. Whatever type of mood I'm in at the time is how I react. You so wouldn't I'm resort to going home and practicing expressions in front of a mirror? No. <laughs> I have um, a problem with having too many expressions, so I don't think I need to practice. What do you mean? The photographers tell you to hold it still? <laughs> no, it's just I'm really very, very dramatic. So therefore, anything that is going on inside of my body is quite obvious on my face, and so therefore I am a horrible liar. What's going on now inside <laughs> your body? I think this is going to be a terrific show. Good. Okay. Uh, if you already met Tracy Tanner, this is Leslie Bennett uh, of the New York Times. Let's just thumbnail reaction to what we were talking about, the concept of going through little strategies, practicing things at home, frowning into the mirror. What do you think about that? Well, I think that um, it's uh, a lot of different ways that you can manipulate somebody and I don't really believe in manipulating people and being something other than yourself in order to produce a reaction in them because in general what you get by manipulating people is not something that's worth having in but my Tra view. Tracy, yeah. Uh, oh, that's, that's the Leslie Bennett I know and love. <laughs> but Tracy, how do you react to that? I mean, you've written a whole guidebook telling women to go stir drinks with their fingers, <laughs> practice expressions and stuff. But there are a lot of women who really don't know what to do, and this is practice to make them feel more at, so at home with themselves. They, they go into a room or, to, or they're in a situation and they don't know what to do and they freeze and sit there. If you can relax yourself and get used to yourself and like yourself, uh, you can bring out a lot of things that you don't know are there. Yeah, but you're dealing with things, as we would say in acting class, in results terms. You're, you're asking for women to do things that mechanically that aren't really coming from inside, which oh, is those, what both Monique yeah, and, some of those and Leslie have said help. here. Yeah, th but those, those little tricks can help you. But what you said about acting, yes, there's a lot of acting uh, therapy. If you do things enough, you get used to typing. The first time you try to type, you don't think you'll ever learn how to do it. After a while, you get used to it, and it becomes part of your personality. I don't quite follow that, but let me move down to Nancy Parker, concerned single woman. Nancy, what's your response to this? Well, A, uh, I would like to say that I did also used to work for Playgirl, Playboy. I, uh, I did, I held a stapler. I, um, I did that for, you know, which is why I don't start drinks with my finger, because, you know, it's been working very hard with the stapler. But I must say that, I must say that uh, if we meet someone and we're indeed th sitting there stirring the drink and all of a sudden this creates a body chemistry cross and they start doing something weird like picking food out of their plate, shoving it in their mouth. <laughs> It does. Take it aside, the fact that it's not cool. Who are you going to attract, stirring your drink with your finger, licking it off, you know, you see some photo, taking a raincoat? This is what I'm concerned about. Who do you attract? Nancy Parker, a concerned single woman. Finally, 
Tony Tucci. I have Tracy Tanner and Tony Tucci. Can you believe it? Two <laughs> authors and they won. Tony Tucci wrote a book called The Butterfly Secret. We'll get into that a little bit later. What's your response? Your book is about dealing with men. Yes, it's true, Bill. Actually, uh, you know, I like Tracy's book. Uh, you, must, you must remember, here I am, an older woman with this young group of girls. I'm 59 years old. I have five grandchildren. And, uh, you know, I, I think anything you can do to kind of give you a little sense of humor and pick you up and make you feel good about yourself or just laugh about something beautiful is, is worthwhile. I really do. Yeah. And especially when you get to my age of the game. <laughs> You need a few tricks. <laughs> you really do. I mean, you need a few tricks, especially in this culture. I guess it would be naive for us to think that people don't have individual little tricks that they that they do. What do you do, for example, if you run into a man? I don't mean physically. <laughs> <laughs> if you you know happen to meet a guy that you would like to have uh, at some point, you know, have him call you. What would you try to do to make certain that that happens? All I would do is. Smile and say hello. That would be the extent of it. She doesn't need no. That's true. Anything. <laughs> she doesn't need anything. True. <laughs> Send him a subscription to Playboy. Right. Oh, I just happened to have my calling card. You know something. Does it bother you or embarrass you that when you meet people that they know exactly what you look like? I mean, you know, really look like, totally <laughs> naked, and uh, you see, you know what I'm saying? Yes, the, I know all the you. mystery is gone. Does that bother you at all? Well, I don't think that. Those are only photographs. That's not like the real thing. <laughs> is mean, it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, no kidding. No, I mean just the feeling, and the, so I don't think that it takes away from the mystery of it. But those are photographs, and that was a job. And I really, I don't even think of that. I don't even think of me being nude. I look at the, the graphic design and my expressions, but I don't even think of it in a way. I guess I've become so comfortable with it is the fact that I am actually nude. Oh, when you how got it flaunted. <laughs> how lucky that's to be. I think, no, I think that's That's how comfortable I am with my body. I've always, nudity has never been a problem. You mean you'd be comfortable if you totally nude right now, just sitting here talking about it? <laughs> that's a little different. No, no, no hold it down, Victor. <laughs> that's a little different. No, you wouldn't I be. Understand. Oh, no, I'd be comfortable. We were, we were, I was talking to Margaret Trudeau about that just last <laughs> week. Uh, I would be very surprised if you were not comfortable looking the way she does. It's true. What do you say to uh, the people who say what you're doing is setting an un you know, this is, it's a classic argument mm -hmm. about the Playmate Centerfold women, uh, that they're setting an unrealistic standard, that uh, essentially by setting yourself up as a sexual object, me most women can't meet the standards of whatever your measurements are. What are they, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> look at you and smile and say hello. <laughs> no. no, but you know what I'm saying. How do you respond to that, that classic uh, feminist argument? Well, in all honesty, I just, I feel that most women have the ability, if they take care of themselves as far as exercising and eat properly, most women can look very, very attractive. It's just a matter of knowing how. And I think if, the, if they actually knew how, that they would be very satisfied. You use what you have, and if that's all you have, that's terrific. Because um, as I was growing up in, in high school, I was not attractive at all. I was the kind of girl Prove that... Prove it. <laughs> I was the kind of girl that men would take out because I was funny, but they would never tell their friends about it. They would never admit to taking me out. That was just... Have you had radical surgery or something? <laughs> since I, what happened? I just developed a little and you know some people Thank God. grow into their looks <laughs> and, and then and the fact of knowing what to do with what you have and that's very important <coughs> and I think that holds true for most women. Les, uh, how do you respond to you know the basic question that is essentially well, presented to any woman who puts herself out as a sex sexual object? What we mean what that does? Yeah what do you think about it? Do you think it's a harmful thing that we have? Women? Well, I, there are many things about the whole Playboy philosophy that I find deplorable. As far as any individual woman's right to do that, if you feel comfortable um, doing what you've done, then that's entirely your prerogative, I think. You know, that's, that, I think that's part of liberation, that people can mm -hmm. make their own choices. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Some, no. Yes, sir. I think in my opinion... Waiting uh, for a response here. <laughs> in my opinion, I think that most men really just the same as girls, they would know, we all know when somebody like us and when they don't. But an awful lot of women and guys too can use every trick in that book 
They need it. You mean you you support the principles yeah. here? <laughs> Some people can Old use buddy. every one of those in there. I'm telling and more, you. huh? I'm more. All right, let, we have to take a break. We'll be back to continue this. I'm curious. You're, you're going to buy the book, huh? Uh, well, I don't think I really we'll need it. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> <laughs> Monique St. Pierre, the uh, Playmate of the Year, has to leave at the end of this segment, so we'll diverge a little bit from Tracy's book for a second. You, you were just saying as we went to a break, that you consider yourself a feminist or the feminist revolution has been a good thing? Oh, Which absolutely. Okay, their philosophy is such as do what you want to do. That's, that's their whole philosophy. This is what I want to do. I am interested in acting. Therefore, I use Playboy as a tool. Playboy is helping me as much as I am helping them. And um, that's, that's the whole philosophy. And I f I f I'm very independent. I've always taken care of myself. Always. I'd like to ask, uh, with regards to what Tracy was saying earlier about about men and uh, pretending you're not as smart as you are and that kind of thing, if you have ever um, consciously manipulated a man or men or pretended to be something other than or less than what you really are in order to um, get a certain strategic result with the man. Are you asking if I believe in that? No, if you've ever done it, if you, there are times when you've found it necessary or thought it might be necessary? Oh, I think that, of course, men do enjoy intelligent women, but there is that fine line. I think that you can, a lot of times you don't have to know it all. Even if you know something a little better than they might, only because you have been confronted with the situation. Do you pretend you don't know it? You listen to what they have to say and you voice your opinion, but it very low key and I think that's really important. What do you think you gain from that by, by really not showing what you really honestly are? Well, no. Now, honesty, you should be, but there's, there's timing. Timing is very important. How you say things. There might be things that you know, but it's very important how you say them. Therefore, you don't want to create a situation where the man is going to feel uncomfortable. Just and because I think you would be. This is what Tracy was saying. You really, you really believe that? Oh yes. I mean, men enjoy intelligent women. I'm not saying that. I mean, this is the age of intelligent, beautiful, intelligent women, and they go hand in hand. But there is a fine line. We begin to worry when they are too smart. Yes. Maybe so you worry. I, I love I, I, I worry. Speak for yourself. I love I smart worry. women. I worry. I really I, oh, I love smart no, women. No, don't ever, I mean, don't get me wrong. You shouldn't ever come across like you're dumb. I mean, no, that would dumb. be awful. That but isn't anything worst. that really puts you in a position of not being yourself essentially a lie? Whether it's no, no, not no, no, showing... No, 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 That's not being... That's not It's not a fine line. There, it's a fine... It's a matter of knowing when to say something and knowing when not to say something. That's not deceit. You can never give, give us the, the, uh, the feeling that you're much brighter, smarter than we are. Why? Why feel, do we have feel, to... Well, what she's talking about is making a man feel uh, <laughs> less than she is. You see, that, that's very dangerous. Because yes, it is dangerous. <laughs> it's true because, it's it's true because uh, well, like you say, <laughs> macho man, you know, whatever you want to call it. But men uh, were not born to, to feel less than a woman. And when a woman makes him feel that well, way. Well, that's their hang up. When a woman it? makes yes. him feel that way. My, my point is, my point is insecurity here. A feeling of, a feeling of, of, of insecurity. And when a man feels that, he, he just doesn't want any part of it. Right, exactly. So you're, what you're saying is, in order for a man to feel comfortable, we have to always be in the dominant position. No, I'm not saying that. Words, I'm not saying, saying that either. Hill, is what you're saying that women are so superior they have to pretend to be inferior in order <laughs> to massage <laughs> men? No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying either. That's not what no. I'm saying either. I'm saying exactly what she said. You don't have to show us that you are inferior to us. You don't have to do that at all. Because we like already know that. that. We like <laughs> smart women. We like smart women, but don't. But not too smart. But no, not no. give us the, the feeling of insecurity. Timing. I mean, you it's see? not that you. Back to timing. Actually, you're you're brighter than. I mean, if if you say you're not as as far as business goes, you don't just say whatever you feel. It's important to say what is the fact when the situation presents and itself how you present and how, it. how you right. present the situation yeah. in business. I mean, you would be a terrible businessman if you went out and told the... So you're drawing, of course, but are we really talking about business? Are we talking about it's right. still the same old story, man, I'm woman I'm talking about life. Life? In general, timing and how you... I mean, there's certain situations, certain people that you will meet. 
And there's a certain way, there's certain <coughs> things that you shouldn't say. That's not because you're being deceitful. You know, you're being yourself. You just don't say everything that comes right you're in your head. You're cutting off a spontaneity Dancing. that people have. You're calculating. You can't, you know, you just, there's a spontaneity that happens between a man and a woman. You can't say, oh, wow, I said something. No, I no, no, but it's, it's <laughs> much... <laughs> Why don't we just saying, program our conversations feel? No, 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 no. It should a never be that. could probably do it better. No, right? no, no. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying that. It's just, it's just common when sense. When you meet the, when you meet a man, let me tell you, and you are a, a worried single. Is that how you introduce her? Not a this worried is a single. Concern. Woman. <laughs> <laughs> this is a concerned <laughs> single woman. Concerned. Nancy right. Right. I'm sorry. Concerned. Concerned, <laughs> concerned <right>. single woman. <laughs> when you meet, when you are, when you are, when you meet a man. I mean, you, not just the woman alone, but the guy himself, too, has to be very careful. I mean, you're just trying to make the, the, f the first impression counts an awful lot. Oh, sure. And if you're going to come and say everything that comes into your <laughs> mind, uh, I mean, you're going to blow it. That, that's for sure. You have to I be careful. That's, that's not manipulating. No, that's not that's being, your opinion, though. That's not being dishonest. It's just being careful, but what like that, she said. That opinion supports the fact that if a woman shows that she does have a lot of smarts, it's going to scare the man away. If no. she comes on too no. strong... No. You're not going to no, come no. out and no, start no, no. That's reciting not what Einstein. Saying. That's okay. what he okay. said. Okay. Okay. Oh, right. you're I, drawing I, the fine line. I guarantee, you, I guarantee you that most men will be disappointed and afraid if suddenly a woman comes on so strong and, and show to show him that she's so smart and she knows all the answers much better than he could ever ever possibly know it. How can you learn? You could you, never make it with a yeah. man that way. I you mean, could never do it. Well, well listening is a man person. like you. Or even a person. I guarantee you that with 98% of men you could never make it that way. There, nobody men? <laughs> I agree. Well, let me see the hand. Men. I want to see the men here. Is that true? We got one hand. No, there's two over there. Nobody else? Two men. So you like dumb oh, women, man. It's smarter. I, I, let me, speaking for myself, I just want a woman to be herself. I don't want her to have to manipulate herself in order to think that she has to act this way to oh, get sure. me to like her. I just want her to be herself. And if it turns out that in the process of this woman being herself, she looks like this. <laughs> <laughs> and she's smart. Great. Well, well look, you know, um, just like realize, there are an awful lot of men also who need strong women. Otherwise, oh. they cannot survive without strong women. They need strong women who will like them to and be on the top. Conversely, well, there must be a lot makes of men. It interesting. If we they were all alike, it would be right, terribly I mean, look boring. at the opposite. I mean, we're talking about women that are smart, acting dumb. What about a nice, pleasant, uh, happy woman who doesn't feel like she all of a sudden has to go to the library and get out books? I mean, she's happy that way, too. You don't want to change either way. No, whatever no, you, you feel saying? when you are content within yourself and, y and you're happy with yourself, that's the key to life. Right. That's why we're here, to be happy. And so whatever you feel comfortable with yourself is what you You're going to go places, like. I know that. <laughs> You're going to go places, you got the answers. Yes, and we'd like to help, Monique. <laughs> uh, at any rate, Monique has to, uh, oh, Monique can stay through the next segment, a sign tells me. Well, then let's take a break and we'll take some questions <laughs> coming back right after this. We'll be right back. <laughs> All right, we're back to still the same old story. Real man, woman stuff on today's show. Everybody has a different opinion about it, so we can't really come to too many conclusions. But I think it's interesting to talk about. Now, here's a woman in the audience with a question. What's your name? My name's Jody. Jody? Yes, Thanks I have a question. Thanks for coming down today. Thank you. I have a question for Tracy. Tracy, you say that you were inspired to write this book by a woman who had quite a few husbands, other women's husbands. So tell me, what happens to the girl or woman who picks up this book, reads it, goes through learning everything, the motions, then meets a married man, ends up living with him, and then to find this married man going back to fool around with his wife on the side? I mean, then essentially, she's got, he's cheating on her? Right, exactly, his, like he did. Oh, well, are they living wife. together? Yes. Well, that's a different situation than, uh, than uh, being kept, actually. Is it? Right, because if when you're kept by a man you have your own private life you have your business life you have your social life that's separate and he is just simply a living fantasy that comes in and out of your life when you're living together it's like you're living as man and wife so it's really not the same thing that Marvin Triola kind of thing is, is a different situation than, than a part-time mistress I see thank you all right then let's go right to the back here in the second tier of questions hi what's your name my name is Dee and I also have a question for Tracy I actually have two questions. I'd like to know, did you follow your own advice in finding your own husband? And secondly, 
Is the purpose of your book to make a woman aware of how to attract a man? I mean, essentially, what's to stop somebody from, while she's stirring her drink and licking her lips, sticking out her foot in a movie theater and knocking a guy over? <laughs> well, I did, I did use what I wrote in the book to, I mean, to find my husband now. Uh, being active and doing a lot of things, if you're a lot of places, you're bound <coughs> to run and meeting a lot of people. Eventually, you do meet someone you actually like, staying home and having Pizza Man deliver, and that's your only access. You're not going to meet many people. Except the Pizza Man. Pizza Man, that's it. There's some pretty macho Pizza Man around town. Which, uh, which trick did you use to get your husband? Was it the <laughs> tennis <can't>. court? <laughs> where, where was you it? Can. I'll have to ask him which one he really liked the best. You mean you used all of them? <laughs> And he's still there. Pretty tenacious man, I'd say. Okay, another, another question here. Hello, my name is Jane Bess. I would like to pose a situation to Tracy. Suppose you're a passive woman and you read your book and um, you're influenced by it and you go to a bar and you're stirring the drink around and the man says, my God, she looks like she's uh, soliciting or maybe she's a prostitute. And so they come over and they introduce themselves and you invite them over for a drink and all of a sudden they're all over you. What if you're not like that? What if you're just doing that because you're influencing you? This is the only resource you think you can go to. No, it's what you have to deal with the person, I mean, the person you come across. We come across that all the time. Women uh, are offended by men constantly that they don't feel they deserve the, the treatment they get. They're insulted or treated, you know, not what, like we'd like to. Stirring your drink isn't gonna do anything. It's something that, uh, like I said, it's, it's a, a little subliminal trick, uh, but it's a communication. It's like uh, eye contact or you can, is that, You don't think it's a turn on? You don't think? It's supposed oh, yeah. to be a turn on. That's why she wrote it in you the don't book. Think the right under licking your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> but don't you think four. the man will think something? <laughs> Don't well, you? I don't, you're not supposed to belabor it and, and, My and slobber all over yourself in the process. Yeah. It's just something that... Um, That's the trick to attract them. <laughs> then when he comes to you, then it's you up talk. to you to you handle the situation. <laughs> when you're talking, then you can communicate much better. This is just to... Uh, then you can use Break words. Break the ice. <laughs> yeah. What would you say, Nancy? I said, then you can use words when you... Then, then you get yes, <laughs> later, <laughs> words would be appropriate. Later, <laughs> later in the conversation. All by showing them how smart you are. <laughs> All right, but you have to get their attention first. You know, not staring well, straight down at the, at the bar. You want to... You want to establish communication somehow. I think you should do them all at once. Like, take the tennis ball <laughs> to the bar and start bouncing everything. Look at it as we go. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Before, listen, before we go back to another question, I have a question for you, Monique. In this position as Playmate of the Year, people, you know, and what I was saying before with men, sort of knowing, you know, what you look like from the magazine and just really being a very attractive woman. What strategies do you have to keep men out of your life? I, I don't use strategy. No, I'm just, I am what I am, and if I'm not interested, they know I'm not interested. If I'm interested, they know I'm interested. And so you have to keep your eyes on your goals and not oh, let all the energy of the men who want you for whatever reasons, some absolutely. professional, lots oh, of personal. Oh, certainly. All of a sudden, you hear from people you haven't heard from for years. Some of those guys from high school. <laughs> all these telephone calls start coming in. Monique, yes. what are you doing later? <laughs> <laughs> She's going to Cincinnati, I checked. <laughs> all right, let me shift back to uh, the back row here. Yes, my name is Nancy, and I have a question for Tracy. I'd like to know what to do to revive a past romance. Revive? Bring Re it back to life? Or revitalize it, yes. All right. Uh, Excuse me. Let's get some facts first. Is this totally finished romance? Have you seen the person in a long time? Well, I have seen Sometimes them. Sometimes an appearance on a talk show, making a direct <laughs> plea into the camera. <laughs> has been known to work. <laughs> well, he's at work, unfortunately, when this uh, program is being aired. But um, I have kept in contact with him uh, uh, just in the hope that um, I may, be, by being persistent, be able to win him back. I'm willing to be patient. What, ha what uh, changed the situation? How did you split up? Or was, was this a split? Well, his parents manipulated him into breaking up with him, me. So when he, was this? Uh, this was, uh, well, in December a year ago. His parents? His parents manipulated him, yes. 
They may be watching. And there you go. <laughs> <laughs> be careful. Wow. Well, all right. Let's try to give the, let's try to give this woman some direct advice. Do you feel he's still interested and he's just listening to a higher? Well, I got a very good vibe when I spoke to him this morning. <laughs> <laughs> his head on That's your pillow encouraging. Time. <laughs> That's encouraging. As he was leaving the apartment this morning. Monique, what, what kind of advice do you have? Now, this is obviously this woman wants to, why don't you just tell the truth? Let him know you want to get back together. Well, you see, he was in a hurry. I didn't, oh, <laughs> he told me that he'll call me next week, so um, he wants to know why I'm, you know, uh, uh, it's sort of a personal thing, you oh, know. Well, sure. <laughs> Bob, no one's listening. Keep going. I, I just, <laughs> no, I was ready to tell him that the reason um, that I'm still calling is because I'm still in love with him, but he didn't let me get to the goodie yet. <laughs> Send well, him a singogram. <laughs> send him a singing telegram. Yeah. Well, if he doesn't call me back, I'll call him and tell him. Oh, I can him. tell that. <laughs> I'm over for a fun. Well, listen, will you please keep me posted on what happens. Well, will you give me your phone number so that I can let you uh, so that I can let you know the details? Uh, call me here at the office. Um. Well, sometimes you don't accept my phone calls. <laughs> Hey, wait a second. I'm not the guy, am I? I mean... Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, I hate to make your ego feel bad, but you're definitely not him. All I can say is... <laughs> I'm glad that, uh, I that I made you feel better and that you're relieved. Listen, I oh. feel so good. Wow. Well, you don't I'm know what you're missing. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. If you haven't tried it, don't knock it. <laughs> oh. Can we hire you as a writer? <laughs> yes, I have my own scenario. <laughs> well, good luck I with the end. I have something especially in mind for you that I would like to talk to you personally when I do speak Is it on you? page 42 of this book? <laughs> uh, Does it involve no. a banana and chocolate? No, it's okay. not. It will be in my letter that I'm planning to write to you. Well, I'll read it. <coughs> I Thank hope you. you this time you will give it your very special <laughs> attention. I absolutely will. <laughs> Thank well, you very much. Well, uh, actions speak louder than words. Again, right. if only we could have this woman writing our promotion, I know that we'd be in good shape. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> you just had it for a couple minutes. <laughs> All right, we have to we have to part, and we'll be back. Are you leaving? Is Monique yes. leaving? The powers that be are taking her away. Monique St. Pierre, Playmate of the Year, 25th anniversary year. Good luck. Thank You're you going to go a long way. I can Thank tell. You. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we're back. Leslie, you have a question for Tracy, and then we're going to get to Tony, and then Yeah, I have, I have a couple and questions, Tommy. actually. The, we've sort of been focusing on a lot of the, the specific techniques that you recommend in your book, but I'm interested in the basic premise, which is how to make a man keep you, financially support you. Um, and that is reducing, I mean, you, you do talk about love in addition mm -hmm. to a great deal about sex in this book. And, um, you know, sex is a business transaction uh, there's a word for women who do that in our culture. What distinguishes a woman who does what you're talking about in the book from a prostitute? Oh, this. And no. why would somebody want to want to do that? Want to be kept. Well, y you don't set it up as a business like that. You're well, you know, the whole book is about how to set it up as a business transaction and get him to start taking over a share of the rent and doing all of these other things. But it's not done technically like that. It's done as a fun thing. Your your yeah, work. What difference does it make? You're still trying to achieve the same end. <clears throat> yes, you are. But if you're, you're, you're selling your sexual services, basically, to somebody who's going to give you some kind of monetary reward. I mean, that's really what the I book think is about. Probably the difference between, uh, uh, are we talking about prostitutes and, let's say, women who want to be kept, if that is indeed what we are talking about. I think the difference between is a roof over the head. <laughs> I mean, that seems to be the whole thing. I mean, seriously, that's what we're talking about, one specific place. 
as opposed uh -huh. to oh no, you're talking about you're talking about a woman who wants to have a relationship with a man, and she knows and understands he's married, and also when she means she's being kept, she's being supported in the style that's going to make him happy, and she can't afford it, so she he is doing the keeping. Yeah, in but other back, words, to, he's back to back to Leslie's houses. original premise. Yes, yes but that doesn't make her a prostitute. Well, let's have the let's let's have the question answered by. Uh, you have a relationship with a man. Mm -hmm. He's responding to appreciating you and liking you. You are, if it's love, which in some case it is, it's a way of reciprocating because he's not there a lot of the time. Why can't he just reciprocate with love? You can, but if he cares about you, he will take some responsibility for you also. He leaves you alone on weekends, holidays, and things like that, and feels bad about it if he cares about you. So he tries to, to make your life a little easier in some way with gifts or... Um, making things easier for you. Another thing I wanted to ask was in the very beginning of this show you talked about, you said something about how this was a book that was designed to uh, tell women how to take charge of their own lives, take their lives into their own hands mm -hmm. and set up this kind of a financial arrangement. It seems to me that if you're talking about taking your life in your own hands, this is about the worst way to do it. This is making you completely dependent on the whims of some man. There's no job security, there's no pension and no benefits. Oh no. There's is that not the most dependent, insecure way a woman could choose not to live? Not at all. Not at this all. This is a part-time fantasy that you're living out. Your, your social life, it doesn't mean you're giving up and waiting at home by the phone for his command. You're leading your own personal life. You have your friends, your social circles, your personal interests, hobbies, nice. work, and this is just an extra, extra fantasy, a thing to do you're in a relationship with a man, which you're going to have anyway. You've actually lived like this? Oh, yes, very much. So I adored it. What period of time? For about 12 years. How did you feel about the fact that you were involved with some other woman's husband? I didn't feel badly at all because uh, and it was And the fact that he escape. was lying, that he was living a lie, living a double life. That's yeah. what always bothers me, is the fact that all of this essentially means that you have to be really dishonest with someone who is supposed to be the most important person in your life. But not really. <laughs> hey, let's hear it for truth. <laughs> truth. No, sometimes... Uh, you don't share the same things with your wife. Maybe you, one person can't fill everything in your life a lot of times. Yeah, and you go to other people for someone to talk to sometimes or, or sharing the same it's business. It's true, but you're talking about basic dishonest behavior. But, you really uh, are. Bill, may I say something, please? Absolutely. You, you are, no, wait just a moment. Uh, you're su suggesting that it is her fault about that situation that she's in with this man. No, I asked or her how, what her reaction was, how she felt but about it. Yeah, wasn't but saying about it was the her honesty fault. or being dishonest, you also have to remember and take in consideration that the man is just as much responsible as she is, or even more, more so, sure. because he's the one who's always pursuing Well, he's this. the one who's being dishonest with his, with his wife. Right. So, uh... But that's, that's not my responsibility. I mean, I'm not creating this. This happens every day to everyone. I'm not, I'm not saying go out and do it, but dealing with the situation as it arises. Not, not blaming yourself and not wanting to necessarily take away somebody else's husband. That isn't the motive in most cases. You're just simply enjoying a portion of your life with them, with no intentions of them leaving in the end. If you're in love with them, there's, it's exciting a lot of times uh, to be really in love with someone and looking forward to seeing them. And then when they do go away, and you don't know if they're ever really going to be yours, it's an exciting thing to look forward to. It seems that the, it's a double-edged thing. It adds if a you fall in love, if you fall in love with a person who ultimately ends up rejecting you and staying with his that, wife, no how exciting is that? No one can control who they love. How many times have you fallen in love with someone and they, they could care less about you? Fourteen. <laughs> Fourteen times. That happens all the time. Nobody can control who they love or who loves them. So when you do run across it, enjoy it for as long as it lasts. Nancy, you want to say No, I was going to say, just getting back to being kept, that uh, isn't it true, though, that like there's a definite denial in, in self and who you are because you're handing over everything like that that, that a woman should deal with business-wise. They should have to deal with money. They should have to deal with, if they can't meet the bills, how they're going to work out a budget kind of thing. You deny yourself, and unless you're schizophrenic, you may have that other self to fall back on, but most of us have one. And I'm just saying that... You deny part of who you are. You deny a lot of who you are by not having to deal with life as it is, and that includes bills and rent, and that's pretty exciting. <laughs> no. no, really, right? Listen, we have to take a fast break. Uh, we have to take a fast break. We'll be back to continue right after this. Stay with us.
Okay, we have, uh, you know, you've heard from Tony Tucci on the show. I haven't showed you her book. It's called The Butterfly Secret. And essentially, this is a book, uh, I read half of it. Uh, I would say designed to show older women how they can enjoy sexual relationships and good relationships with much younger men, correct? Correct. Uh, Tell us a little bit about your own experience in this area. Well, actually, uh, Butterfly Secret is my own experience. I it's know. It's absolutely 100% true in my own experience. Uh, Bill, my husband died in 1974, and uh, you know, we older women out there, we're, we're the drug users. You were 54 you know? when he died. 54, yeah. and it was Valium all day long, and wake up pills, and sleeping pills, and actually just feeling cut out from society, and uh, you know, I felt I was kind of attractive, but still, when your contemporary men, 50-year-old men, are going out with 25-year-old girls. And yet, if a 50-year-old woman goes out with a 25-year-old man, you know, that's a, it's that's a almost, downer trip, right? It, it has been almost like a taboo. I think yeah. you say in your book, why is it that men mature and, and women, women grow old? It's so yeah. true. Now, so why? you're working to reverse this. I am, and it's working. Working hard. <laughs> it's really working out. But, you know, let's remember something that Dr. Sonia Friedman says, that every marriage in the world ends in desertion, divorce, and death. And it usually is the woman who carries on alone. And this is what Butterfly Secret is about, just telling women, you know, we have a big problem. There just aren't enough men to go around. The contemporary men, my contemporaries in their 50s or so, are all marrying younger women. And really, you can't blame them. And the wonderful thing that's happened in women's liberation... Why, why can't you blame them? It's based purely on a physical well, aesthetic. Well, because it's but. nice to have a young body. It's nice to have new outlooks and, and feeling good and not listening to somebody's aches and pains. So you're basically subscribing to the same philosophy by I'm, saying... I'm you're, like, you're trying no, to make the same thing... I'm not to Tracy's uh, philosophy so much because... It's no, but the whole philosophy of younger... Younger, younger, younger bodies. bodies. Younger bodies and younger feelings and getting back into the swim of things. It's, it's really a terrifying thing to be an older women out there in society, you know, you're just not, you have no place to go. Well, how old are the fellas you date, for example? Now, you're well, 59, I, I, as you yeah, said. Yeah, and I go out with a man who's 34, and I've been going with him for two years, and we have a very good relationship. And boy, I had to go through a lot of things. It wasn't easy, you know, to go dancing and, you know, and just know that you you look much <coughs> older than he does, and he is a younger man. Disney movies, stuff like that. Well, no, I understand. Studio 54, and that whole number, you know, it's, it's marvelous. You know, my children, my daughter's 32, and my son is 24, and I have five grandchildren. How do they feel about all this? Well, they feel absolutely, actually, uh, you know, my, my my publisher said to me about six, seven weeks ago, he said, hey, what about your children? I hope they're not going to sue us. And I said, you know, I've never asked my, my daughter is a woman, so we have a wonderful relationship. But I really have to ask my son. And I did say to my son, I said, you know, Gary, what do you think of your mother on the cover of this book and talking about younger lovers and everything? How do you feel about it? And he, he's a musician with the Rhode Island Philharmonic. And he looked at me and he said, you know, you've always been a wonderful mother to me. He said, that's the dumbest question you've ever asked me," he said. Because most of my friends, their mothers are on their back. You know, what are you doing? When are you coming over? And everything. And he said, "You, I have to drive down to see you and and enjoy you, and uh, it's something special to me." And he said, "One of the reasons is probably because that you're you're you know keeping your life going, and that's what it's all about. Why shouldn't you have a better life as you get older?" if not as good as the first part, but, you know? Why, why should so much be, and I recognize this is an idealistic question, why should so much be totally based on the physical aesthetics rather than the spiritual and the intellectual things that people accrue during their lives? But my dear, that's exactly, that's what's the wonderful relationship about the older woman and the younger man? You know, it's an empty nest syndrome. I have nobody to cook and take care of. I'm the most marvelous cook in the world. I have nobody to take care of. And it's so marvelous to give that. You must remember the young man, he's gone through the drug scene, he's gone through the uh, dropout at school, He's gone through a war, fought a war he didn't believe in. And he is kind of, you know, he's not into the playboy girl. You know, he doesn't look at women. Men if he 50 met her, years he old. Might be, though. Believe me, he looks into, at women and he looks at their sensuality and their female quality. So he if, really enjoys them. If 34 year old men are so sensible, what happens to them when they become 54 year old men? Well, I'm not going to worry about that. You no, know? but I mean, do you think younger men have different values? Yes, than I older do. Men? I really do. I, I, what am I, I mean? I, I think. I know. I know. I have been through it, and I'm sure in the audience we have women here over 50 that know it's really tough out there, and it's a struggling thing. And I'm telling these women, you know, there are 10 million more widows than widowers. Do you know what a, what a, what a thing we're in? We really, our men all die over 50 quickly. I say that after women have 
have raised the family and they are all by themselves, that they deserve whatever they can get. Well, that's absolutely uh, finally. true. You know, but the wonderful thing is now, nice of you, in traveling across the country with Butterfly Secret, the most amazing thing has happened. I, every place I've gone in the TV studios, the young girls are reading the book. And I look at them and I say, you know, I didn't write these bu this book for you. I wrote it for older women like myself. And they say, Miss Tucci, I'm not even 30 years old. I'm married and divorced and have a child. And my husband has left me for a 19-year-old girl. Mm. <laughs> wow. Listen, we have to take a fast break. And we'll do it and get back as soon as possible. So don't rush off. All right, let's go right to you. So we, I, I'm told from Susan Butler we have, and Carmen Matias, we have some hot questions from the audience. So we'll shoot to the back and see how hot it is. Hi, what's your name? Yeah, my name is Marie Matthew. I have a uh, question directed at Stacy. I like to Tracy. know. Tracy. Tracy, I'm Tracy. sorry. I'm sorry. I like to know what type of man does a woman hope to attract with this um, type of I'm willing attitude or behavior? And uh, what will happen in the end if she's not able to make this fantasy a reality? And how uh, far on in the relationship should the trick stop? Good. Three good questions right in a row. Okay. These, these are you. only meant to, to get yourself started. You, uh, you select who you're going to meet dozens and dozens of men. None of them you will even like. You don't, com you don't carry on a, a conversation with someone you don't, you're not even interested with very long. And you don't have relationships with people very long that you're not the least bit interested in. These are just simply going through these different people till you do meet someone that you really do like, and then you're not playing a game any longer. You get to be yourself. You're not playing a game to begin with. You're just entertaining yourself in the process. But these aren't real, you're not playing tricks on them. That's what I think the, the misconception is that this whole thing is, is a charade. It yeah, isn't. But, but part of what you're saying is, is not part of what you're saying, use the sexual dynamic, which is so involved in most relationships between men and women in order as a lever, as a, to, for leverage in order to get this guy to come over. And I think what this young woman was saying is, if you're using that, then at what point along the line is the guy either going to call your bluff or are you going to have to go to bed with him? No, once he's over there, then you're talking. You are yourself. You're not still playing games. It's just getting to talk to him to begin with. How, what do you do when you meet someone? How do you approach a girl? Head on. <laughs> Head on approach. <laughs> Well, what do you, it, what do you say? It, all the, it all depends. It all depends on the circumstances. Yeah, the last saying. one that I said something to said, "Gee, I'm married with two children." <laughs> you know, I didn't know that. I just yeah, yeah I'd like to call you sometimes. See, she this said, is all based on, on having happened in a bar. <coughs> that isn't where we meet everyone. We meet people in so many situations. You don't have to play games when you meet them. You just simply talk to them. Which says that? Uh, ahead, yeah. What you're saying that you you just start uh, establish communication with the guy. Right. But you he, just let him know, hey, we can talk. Right. And if I don't like you, I don't like you. You know. Mm -hmm. um, we all have that decision to make every day. Yeah, I'm not well, crazy that's, about that's it. Once you get to know the guy, <laughs> you know, once you start talking to him, then it's from there on, you just let him know it might work, it might not work. Right? I guess. I mean, it's all so <laughs> totally, every situation is totally an individual situation. That's why I think these rules, like looking in the mirror and practicing things, aren't worth anything. No, that's it, just to, to make yourself yeah, comfortable with that's yourself. That's the part I, I didn't like. Anyway, does that satisfy you at all? I, I loved your question. I'm not crazy about the no, answer. No, not really, but I'll accept it. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> okay, now we have a question from this woman in the front here. Yeah. My name is Juanita. I'd like to pose my question to Tracy. Tracy, now that you're married, how would you accept the situation if you found out that your husband also kept a mistress? Good question. Mm -hmm. I, I, well, in my situation, since you're making it for me, it wouldn't be possible for my husband to have a, to have a mistress, so it's hard for me to imagine that. Why, is he locked up? Is he locked up at home? I mean, how do you know? How do you know that while you're here taping this show, he's not <laughs> huh? because, because of the lifestyle that we lead. We, we do a lot of things together. We share our life a lot so that we're in touch with each other. If we live two separate lives, it would be more likely, but we do share a lot of things, which makes it But how would, would no you reasons. feel? How would you feel was the question. Well, I, would, I would not feel terrible. I would feel terrible. But I don't, but I don't let that opportunity but arise would because I have a lot in common with, we share a lot of things. That's, would you feel as though there was anything wrong with the woman that was having an affair with your husband in having, her having her? an affair? No, no, her having an affair with a married man. No. What no. if she read because your book? it's his decision. It's his decision. <laughs> <laughs> it's his decision to cheat. I mean, it's the man's decision. You can't make him do anything. He decides that. You can't blame the woman. 
Well, she's making an ethical choice, too. Right. It's a decision between two adults, and uh, you can't blame the woman for it, and you can't blame the man for it. It's two adults doing it. But as that the wife, is. who would be the victim in this case, you mm -hmm. admit that this would be a terrible thing. That it would hurt you a lot. Oh, to find that out, yes. Okay. Let me shift to the back room. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's another question from a guy. Dan McCusick, I'd like to ask really anybody in the panel a question that's kind of troubled me lately in that... Okay, in Dan, we'll take care of it for you. <laughs> what do you like to know? In this day of liberation, it seems like often there's a confusion that I know a lot of other guys feel about in terms of should you still hold the door open for the woman? Do you still pick up the tab every time? This type of uh, kind of confusion, it's kind of an area that has not really been well defined yet. And when you, you're competing with women in the job market nowadays, but yet you're still sometimes expected to do the traditional chauvinistic things that were, you know, often liberation uh, is considered chauvinistic now. I just wonder, what you, what's your opinion about that? Right exactly? on. Well, oh, can I answer first? I, yeah, go ahead, Oh, Tony. boy, because that's a big problem with the older right. woman and the young fella because he's gone back to school. He doesn't have much money, you know, as a rule. And the older woman, of course, her husband has died and tried to take care of her. Or she's got some kind of thing that she's working on. Has a little more money. At least she's got a home, and she can cook him a meal and everything. And I really do think that people should not be so sensitive about it. It. And I don't think the young men are really so sensitive about it anymore. The older men, the contemporary, my contemporaries will make some joke about it and say, oh, she's picking up the tab or something. But I think when it's done in honesty, I mean, you know, once in a while you got to break out and take us to McDonald's. But in the meantime, if I can take you to a beautiful French restaurant and, and you buy the movie tickets and we share each other, and I think that's really happening today. And you, you'll see them uh, out and enjoying themselves. There's no reason you should be deprived because you feel a little bit embarrassed. Right. I think women's liberation has done a lot for them. Now, this, there's a woman in the back who wants to make a point. Just come, come on down to the mic, but duck under the camera. Now, st stay there, Dan, because there's other things of what you said. The whole concept of opening doors, right? Yeah. I know of guys who have been in a situation where they've opened the door for a woman, and the woman resented it. You know, she didn't like it because that's of that happened. Silly. That's silly. That's silly. I think it's silly because what is that's not infringing on on me as a person, as a self. I think people do tend to get a little too wrapped up, a little too far. I like the door held open. You know, I mean, I'll I don't let the so door heavy. sometimes. <laughs> sure, I, I like basic. it when they stop revolving doors for me and let me go through first. <laughs> like, hey. No, I like it. I really do. If I'm holding it first, if I'm not going to stop. If I go first, you know, I'll go through and hold the door, too. I think, mean, it's Les? a two-way thing. So I, th I think that, um, that it should depend on, I mean, if somebody's, if some, a man is carrying packages. When I walked in tonight to the studio, <coughs> there was a man with his arms full of packages, and I held the door open for him. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I can't imagine getting angry with a man because he held the door oh, open absolutely. for me. For Just me, common I think people sense, should I be think. common sense, flexible and courteous and maintain yeah. a sense well, of when humor. It comes when it comes to uh, paying a bill, picking up a tab, there's something but else. I also because a lot of women resent men who do not pay the tab. But why should, a guy, why should a guy I always have to pay? I well, that's what I mean. I, I, don't, agree. Agree. I don't think a guy should always have but, to but pay. But I women, think most women get offended by it. If we, if we say, hey, listen, you know, can we just share or, or pay your own way or let's go Dutch? I think they don't that's like really that. wrong. I mean, it's got to yeah. be a two-way street. Sure. If we're, you know, if women are, are going to ask people for equal opportunities, they've got to take equal responsibility. And Absolutely. I Absolutely. Good point, Liz. Dan, does that help? I, I, was, I think you hit it right there when you said, like, a lot of guys think that women want the best of both worlds. They want the bills paid no, for them, but they want the door still held open ways. for them. This, no. yeah. I pay, that's a confusion, I pay my I think, half sometimes. of the check. That's all I can say. I even, I even bought half the door. <laughs> 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 all right, Dan, thank you. Now, the woman who got up and I think did manage to walk in front of the camera. Hi, what's your name? Uh, Jane Heisler. What, what would you like to ask or comment I'm, about, I want to speak about the kept woman. Yes. I feel if Exhibit a man a, cares right. for a woman, Pardon, I didn't when a man cares for a woman, like if he cares for his wife, he wants to make her happy if he, you know, and do things for her and buy her things. If a woman isn't married to him, why, sh why can't he feel the same way and want to keep her and do things for her and look after her? If he isn't married, I'm, I'm it, sorry. Yeah, I mean, why do people get so shocked? Just because uh, he didn't take out a license with her, he can't do the same things for her as he does for a wife. Well, because you can fall in love with more than one person. You can care about more than one person. It doesn't mean you have to abandon one for the next one. No, I'm saying that I think uh, I could see why a man would want to keep a woman. If he loves her and he can't marry her, maybe for certain reasons, he might want to make her life just as easy as a man who's married right, that's, to someone. That's what that's I was what saying I'm saying. Before. So what does a wonderful Hall of Fame broadcaster, Bob Costas, have to say after reading 
Spike unleashed? Well, old dog? Not really. New tricks? Plenty. Turns out Spike has more to say and more encounters with the virtuous and villainous figures of our time than any other person, let alone canine, I know. Thank you very much, Bob Costas, for liking Spike Unleashed. Order Spike Unleashed today. It's a roller coaster ride of comical suspense. Orderspike.com takes you right to the Amazon order page. That's www.orderspike.com.